I'd like to quickly share with you something um, really sweet today and I found this on eBay um, in America and it's an original folder from the late 1860s early 1870s and what's amazing about this um, it was obviously a keepsake and I'll tell you why if you look on the cover at the top there it says the 20th of the second my ducks now this folder doesn't actually contain ducks <laughs> um, but rather it's a collection of um, CDV photographs of young girls in their debutante gowns and so my belief was that this was owned by um, a lady maybe possibly from their finishing school who was responsible for tutoring them and training them and it's obviously her affectionate term for her group of students um, and I think it's adorable actually to call, call them her ducks um, um, because of their big floofy bustle gowns probably it makes you think of ducklings with the big fluffy bums and the, all the little white feathers um, similarly these young girls in these bustle gowns they, they they look like they probably look like little ducks waddling along <laughs> with their big bustles out behind them. Um I just think what a cute analogy really um to call her that call them that her her ducks. And I'm gonna open this and show you inside because it's um it's really sweet actually. This lady obviously had a lot of affection for her students and wanted to remember them and she has stuck them down in this little folder. And some of them are named, some of them not named, but obviously she wanted to keep this as a little memento, a memory of her students. Um, and she obviously had um, affection for them. And, you know, in order to lovingly refer to her, refer to them as her little ducks. Um, and they're all young girls of around about 15, 16, 17, which is the sort of age that they would have been... Um, out coming out as they called it into society um and being of debutante age um some of these may well have even traveled to england to be presented to queen victoria um as was sometimes the case with very wealthy girls from from the victorian era they were able to travel and meet queen victoria not all did but but many did um and it became just as popular in America as it was in the UK. It had been long, long standing in the UK for all young girls entering society, which were now of a marriageable age, to be presented to Queen Victoria and therefore formally, um, formally come to court or come out into society. Um, so it's it's lovely to have this collection and it's kind of, really quite a sweet little memento of the past really um sadly one of the little ducks is missing i don't know what happened to that one but it's obviously um come off or been removed for some reason so that's kind of sad but um i would like to show you each one of these because they they're all interesting in that they've all got very similar little, little uh white frothy dresses on they've all got uh, these little white headdresses on i think barring one um, and pretty much all of them have got this interesting sort of little cross around their neck. Now, whether or not that's something to do with um, finishing school or coming out into society or debutante, I'm not sure. But they've all got the same thing. Um, and if any of you know a little bit more about this, about these little crosses, I would really, really be interested to know. I've not actually had time to research it or go into it very much, but if anybody already knows, please leave um, a message in the comment section because um, I, I would like to know more about that. Um, but yeah, let's have a look at some of these. So I'll start with the top row here. And this first young girl here and she's called Lily I can't quite make out the surname um, but yeah Lily and she's holding a lovely little bouquet or tussie mussy as they were called in her hand a little bouquet of flowers surrounded by lace she's got a very unusual belt on a little stripy belt on um, and I believe I've seen some like that before actually around about 
the late, very late 1860s, early 1870s. Um, I believe that most of these girls are from around 1870, possibly to 1872, going by their costumes, and you'll see in a minute why. But such a pretty little face. She's obviously very, very young. Again, probably only 15 or 16. And she has her hair in a low slung plait. I love her little circular earrings. She's got a little locket around her neck there and chain. And then you can see the little sort of, it's a kind of like a cross symbol around her neck um, with an engraving on it. But sadly, we can't read, read the engraving. Um, and moving on to the second one here, you can see again the little white flower headdress um, and the sort of like cross type thing around her neck. Um, sadly you can't see very clearly the details on the gowns because they're quite bleached out by the photography process. Um, some of them you can see a little bit more easily than others. But again, very young. Um, a hair in a in a in a hairstyle which is fairly typical for the late eighteen sixties, early eighteen seventies. Not quite as high in the head as it becomes later in the eighteen seventies. This one's been slightly hand coloured. Um, you can see she's got a gold locket round her neck there, um, and it looks like she might have like a little sort of pink bow or something. Yeah, but very 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 sweet and again the sort of low slung plait there coming down to this one she has again a little tussy mussy posy um well they sometimes called them nosegays <laughs> i think because um traditionally the streets around about in the victorian times could be quite sort of smelly a lot of unpleasant smells around and these little posies full of fragrant flowers um, and herbs and things um, smelt nice and they could carry them with them and sort of sniff them and plus they made a very pretty little accessory um, but with this one I like it because you can really see the bottom of her skirt and you can see the layers and layers of lovely frothy frilly ruffles that she's got on her skirt there that look like they've been edged with lace and she's got a matching overskirt on and um, bodice she's got a locket round her neck again she looks like she's got her hair and some ringlets and possibly resting on a Bible or something there on the on the table. This one, again, it's been hand coloured slightly, um, which is quite, quite nice. Um, again, she's got the little uh, sort of cross thing around her neck. Um, it looks like she's got a lovely little frilly lace collar, possibly a little pearl necklace on there as well. This next one is interesting because it's very, very clear photograph, beautifully, beautifully clear. And it says at the bottom, um, folks, porcelain photographs, folks is patent, or folks is patent, October the 19th, 1869. That was probably when the patent was established rather than when the photograph was taken. Although I would imagine it wouldn't be too much after then sort of sometime around 1870 to 1872, that sort of period. But again, you can see the little necklace with the sort of cross symbol there. Um, you can see her earrings, which look like they might be a type of porcelain, actually, and a matching brooch, which is lovely. Very pretty little face. <laughs> um, so that's a very interesting one. And then moving on to here, again, another one with a tussy mussy. And she has a lovely frothy frilly lace skirt as well. It seemed that most of them were like this with the lots of frills at the bottom. And most probably made of um, some light uh, material like a light silk or a organza or tulle or possibly like um, sort of like a, a, a sort of um, organdy or something like that um, or muslin. And you can see, you can just make out she's got a sort of bow at the neck there. And then ringlets. And a very uh, slight train, but you can see she's got a bit of a bustle there. And 
this one this is lovely because you can see much more clearly in this photograph they've not bleached the whites out so much and you can see clearly the lovely um, frothy frills on the dress and how sheer the fabric is so po possibly um, a silk organza or a tulle um, more than likely or possibly even a cotton organza or muslin or something like that something very sheer very lightweight very delicate she's got a little bow around her neck lovely earrings actually um, pretty little earrings she's carrying a lovely little hand fan with an ostrich feathered tip on it Again, leading, leaning on some books there. This one's lovely. She's got such a serene, pretty face with just a slight smile on. And lovely expression, actually, in her eyes. And um, she's got lovely earrings, lovely dangle earrings. And lovely little velvet band around the plait, which she's wearing, actually, quite high up on her head there. Um which would suggest definitely sort of early 1870s. Um, same white flowers again on the hair. You can't make out a lot of the dress, sadly, on this one. You can just make out she's wearing a chain and the cross there, and that's about it. Can't make out much. This one, again, beautiful photograph. Lovely expression on her face. Um, looks like she's got little orange blossoms in her hair, little white flowers again. Hair high up with a with a um, plait on her head, and she's got lovely earrings too. She seems to have like what looks like one of those Victorian hair brooches around her, uh, her throat. You know where they had plait or weave the hair in intricate patterns, possibly like a little um, keepsake or memento um, of a of a loved one. Um, and she's got the cross around her neck and you can see there's like an engraving there. We can't make out the writing, which is such a shame. Possibly her name, maybe, and the year that she left as a uh, finishing school or the year that she uh, was presented at court. Who knows? But interestingly, she's got like a little thin chain around her neck as well with what looks like a selection of beads um, and a locket on, which is quite unusual, I thought. So there's that one. This one is the only one that's not wearing a white flower crown. Um, she's still got the little the little cross engraved sort of um, sorry engraved cross around her neck. Still, I'm so curious to know what those are. I'm sure that if I researched it, I'd be able to find out actually, and I may do that at a later date. But if any of you know anything about that, please comment below. Lovely little dangle earrings again. Nice little gown. Not a light, frothy white gown like the rest of the girls, though, this time. Um, more like a sort of a regular sort of day gown. And then coming down to the bottom row, the last row here, you see this lady here. She has um, got a lovely, what looks like a lovely polonaise overdress. And you can just make out that she's actually got little bows going all the way down the front of the bodice and the overskirt there and possibly what seems to be a little sheer uh, cape over the top of that little ca capelet or something you can just make out the edge of a sleeve there with her hand hanging by her side nice roughly sleeves um lovely roughly over skirt the, the, the underskirt there is quite plain looking not so many ruffles on it but very very pretty um, and it's had a little bit of hand colouring again, which is which is nice. It's had a bit of damage. It's harder to see what's going on in that one. This one is lovely. You can see really clearly the ruffles again at the bottom of the skirt. Lovely frothiness. Bustle again at the back. It's quite large there. She's holding a tussy mussy, which is lovely to see. And I love her long tubular sort of ringlet hanging down um, over her shoulder there I think that's really pretty very large earrings as well this one again you can see the detail ruffles on the bottom of the skirt and the uh, over skirt there um, small train quite a reasonable size bustle actually and she's got very la large sort of wide sleeves sort of like the bishop style sleeves 
um, that you see in the late 1860s and early 1870s. And she's got her hand on what appears to probably be the Bible there. Um, and you can see the white flowers in her hair again. Taken at the same studio as the last two because you can see the furnishings are the same. The carpet and everything is the same. Um, same as also as that one and that one, funnily enough, taken in the same studio. And the same with this last one as well. And this last one is nice because you can see, again, she's got a um, lovely frothy dress on. Lots of detail to it. You can see the edge of the overskirt a bit more clearly on this one. Um, looks like the waist is belted. Wide sleeves again. Um, looks like she's wearing gloves, white gloves, and she's again leaning on uh, what most likely is a Bible. She has got lovely little drop earrings on again. Um, so yeah, just overall, I think it's just such a lovely collection and actually a rare insight into history. It would be lovely to know who all these girls were and, you know, and why they're kept together in a collection. But like I said, the most likely reason giving their costumes is that they were debutantes or uh, finishing school students. Um, well, generally speaking, um, young ladies couldn't be presented into society until they had fin finished, uh, got through finishing school anyway. So um, it's probably, you know, a bit of both. Um, and... It's just lovely that, that this was kept by somebody as a keepsake, a memory of all these um, young girls. And the fact that they were called ducks as well is so cute. It's so sweet um, with all their little fluffy um, bustles. <laughs> they probably did look like a group of ducks sort of waddling along with the big fluffy bustles out behind them. Um, so, yeah, I think that's so cute, so sweet. Um, and, yeah, it's a shame that not more of them were named and it's a shame you can't know a little bit more about them really but just a lovely um collection of photographs and i thought you'd uh, enjoy to see it and if there's anything else that you want to know or if you want to leave a comment below that's great and um please follow me um here on youtube or instagram um or tiktok wherever you found this my uh, handle is the same on all three accounts it's beauty and the bustle so if you would like to see more videos like this as well as some dressmaking videos um, I make a lot of Victorian clothing bustles hoop skirts um, mostly from the 1870s but I do branch out into other areas as well um, so if you'd like to see making of videos and completed dresses and things like that please do follow me um, leave a leave a comment or like it and uh, please subscribe to my youtube or follow me um that'd be much appreciated um anyway i hope you enjoyed looking at these with me today and hopefully see you in a future video bye